We wanted to use diet as a first line defense for preventing nitric oxide deficiency. How much spinach, celery, broccoli, kale, arugula would you need to eat to reach that threshold of nitrate so the body can convert it to nitric oxide? And so to answer that question, in collaboration with Texas A&M University, we went to five cities across the U.S. and we just took vegetables off the shelf, we brought it back to the lab, and we analyzed it for the nitrate content. And we went to Raleigh, New York, Chicago, Dallas, and Los Angeles, kind of five corners of the U.S. And what we found was, you know, it was really pretty shocking to us. We, we figured there would be some variability, but, you know, there's as much as a 50 to 80-fold difference in the nitrate content of vegetables bought and grown in New York compared to those bought and grown in Los Angeles or Dallas. So then when we uncovered this a little bit more, we realized, well, there's different farming practices uh, on different parts of the U.S. There's different soil conditions, certainly different climate conditions. And then we realized there's a certain number of lightning storms in these different areas. And so nitrogen is fixed in the form of nitrate primarily through lightning storms. So to break the triple bond of nitrogen, you need high energy, and really that only occurs through lightning. So we're finding that in areas kind of in the, the rust belt of the south where there's a lot of thunderstorms, the soil seems to have more nitrate in it. And then other regions, for, for whatever reason, they may not. And then the other shocking thing, so the point of that is we really couldn't make any recommendations on how many servings of a given vegetable you would need to eat because it depends on where it was grown, what the end, what vegetable it was, because there's regional difference, then there's high variability from you know celery, broccoli, kale, spinach, across vegetable categories. And then we did something a little bit on top of that. We took organically grown vegetables. So veg these are vegetables that have an organic label. And then we compared those to conventionally grown vegetables. And on average, the, the organic vegetables had about 10 times less nitrate across the board. And now when you, you got to think about that for a minute because most people think organic is good. I should eat organic. But from our studies, if you're eating only organic, you become nitrate deficient. And I think perhaps more importantly, you need nitrogen in the form of nitrate to assimilate other minerals and nutrients. So if a vegetable is deficient in nitrogen or nitrate, it's not going to assimilate other nutrients. So now these vegetables are deficient in things like magnesium, chromium, selenium, all the trace minerals and vitamins and nutrients that we used to get. So I tell people you, it's really difficult to eat enough organic vegetables to get enough nitrate in your diet to stimulate this nitric oxide production pathway. And organic means that, one, no herbicides, no pesticides, but there's a restriction on nitrogen-based fertilizers added to the soil in organically grown vegetables. So, for instance, what I do when I grow my vegetables, we, we raise our own beef, we grow our own vegetables, but I, so, I sample the soil and send it off and for analysis to figure out what's missing in the soil, what do I need to supplement, and then I add standardized nitrogen to the soil. So I know that my soil is enriched in nitrogen. So the vegetables that I'm eating and that I'm growing here in my own ranch they wouldn't be classified as organic because I'm adding fertilizers, but I'm not adding herbicides or pesticides. So I think there's a fine balance here, and I think people are so caught up in this whole concept of organic, and they really don't know what in the hell organic means. They've been taught by the media that it's, you know, it's good, it's healthy. Well, I think it's free of herbicides and pesticides, but... We now know that the vegetables grown in the U.S. since 1940s have about a 78% less vitamins and minerals and nutrients uh, since the 1940s. So the pressures of feeding a growing planet population is at the expense of nutrient density. Let me just pause you right there because there's a lot I want to get into within what you've just shared. So we know that in general, organic has less nitrate. So and you explain the whole nitrogen being added to the soil and the reason for that. You mentioned the fact that you're growing your own food so you can add that back in and not add the poisons. What do you recommend to people then if they're not able to grow their own food, they don't have you know the time, the land, whatever it is, and they're, they're buying from a grocery store and up till this point they've been buying organic, can we just make up, and there's another piece to this I want to make sure and tease out, and this is something I haven't heard you talk about before. I think the part about the nitrate not being in the soil is easy enough to understand, but you mentioned the fact that it affects the different nutrients beyond the nitrate. 
So I know I threw a lot at you. I want to understand that second part where it's affecting more than just the nitrate. And then also on top of that, for somebody who isn't going to grow their own food, what's the best they can do? Yeah, there's the whole field of agronomy on how do you maximize product yield and nutrient density. And so go back 100 years ago, you know, farmers used to do crop rotation. So they would grow crops that would deplete certain minerals and nutrients from the field. Then they would go back and plant, say, soybean or clover or some vegetable that would replete those nutrients back in the soil. So crop rotation allowed for fertile grounds. Now you see these fields that are just, all they do is, is grow coin. All they do is grow soybean or, or a cotton. So there is no crop rotation. So you, we have to assimilate nutrients in the plants that we grow. And you do that through nitrogen and, and nitrogen assimilation in the form of nitrate. So if the soil is deficient in nitrate, it's most likely going to be deficient in other trace minerals and nutrients. But more importantly is, and you can see this, fertilized versus unfertilized uh, vegetables. The fertilized are really dark green. They have higher yield. The unfertilized is a light green, less nutrient, less yield. So in the organic world, you know, you can add manures, you can add organic compost. But again, there's so much variability in there. There's no standardization of the nitrogen. So you don't even know what you're getting it from. In fact, the manure, the compost may not have any nitrogen in it. So what I tell people is buy local, you know, go to your local farmer's market, talk to your local farmers, support the local growers, and then ask them questions. Say, hey, here's what I'm interested in. And, you know, people who live in really urban areas and in inner cities, you know, it's very difficult. So then really the only solution for them is they've got to do what I call a micronutrient analysis. You can go get your blood tested and figure out exactly what, what are you deficient in. And then you can start to develop kind of some personalized supplementation. You know, we know just broadly from the NHANES study from the U.S. government that 75% of Americans don't get enough magnesium. 95% of Americans are deficient in iodine. 65, 75% are deficient in chromium. Um, selenium, these trace minerals. And this is what causing a lot of chronic disease. You know, Linus Pauling said, you know, famously 50, 60 years ago that most chronic diseases are caused by nutrient deficiencies. If we don't have these trace minerals and nutrients, then the body can't do what it's designed to do and you become dysfunctional and you get sick. So it's, it's, a, very, it's a very interesting question, but it's, the solution isn't very simple, right? So you have to be resourceful. But I think the simple thing is buy local from your local farmer's market and then ask these farmers questions. How are you growing your foods? How are these vegetables? Do you add herbicides, pesticides? Uh, I certainly don't want that in my food supply, but we also I also want nutrients directly from the source. Okay. So the part I'm still a little fuzzy on, the fact that the other nutrients are low in the organic as well. Is that just because when they add the fertilizer, they're adding other things to the soil and upping those nutrients? So I get the fact that the nitrogen isn't being added and that's where the nitrate is lower. But is there something to the other nutrients and why they're lower in the organic as well? Well, to, I'll give you an example. So when I fertilize my, my land, I get nitrogen, I get potash, uh, get potassium and sulfur. So there's, there's a four kind of four main elements that we're adding to the soil. So nitrogen in the form of nitrate, um, and you get potash. And so I use a, a mix because the soil samples tell me this is what I need for this type of land that I'm, I live on and grow in. So I know, for instance, it's 28% nitrogen, 14%, uh, 14, 7, and then 3.5% sulfur. So I'm putting all these nutrients in the soil so that now the plant has a way and the nutrients it needs, kind of like the human body, the plant now has what it needs to assimilate, transport all the other nutrients in the soil, provided those nutrients are in the soil. But if you don't test your soil and they're deficient in certain things, then the plants can't assimilate it because it's not available. And I think that's why soil sampling is so important. So you know exactly what's in your soil or what's not in your soil. And then you can put in there so that you have a nutrient dense food that you're growing in that soil. So it's, it's a matter of availability and just not knowing, but it's also important because even if you have those nutrients in the soil, without nitrogen in the form of nitrate, you don't assemble or transport those nutrients and assimilate them into the vegetable or the plant. That latter part is what I was trying to clarify, so that's great. So we know that 
when we're growing produce in different areas of the country, we're going to have different amounts of nitrogen. We know organic versus conventional is going to have a different amount. I took you on a tangent there. So continue your thought process when it comes to nitrates in the produce. So I guess the point I was trying to make is that this, and we've, we've, we've quantified this. So we took a standard American diet, just what most Americans would eat. And we grind it up and we quantify the nitrate content. And Americans are only getting about 150 milligrams of nitrate per day through normal dietary patterns. And we need at least 300 milligrams to see any trickle of nitric oxide production because the inefficiencies of conversion. So number one, we're not getting enough nitrate. Uh, And then number two, those that eat a plant-based diet, they're not even guaranteed to get enough nitrate because depending on where they live, what vegetables they're eating, organic versus conventional, you may not even getting enough nitrate to reap the benefits of a plant-based diet. So if we took kind of the best case scenario, and so we published on this, we took a Japanese diet, we took a Mediterranean diet, the dietary approaches to stop hypertension, and we just took food choices from those dietary patterns and we quantified the nitrate that one eating those diets would would consume over a period of a day. And we see anywhere in those diets from, you know, 400 milligrams up to 1500 milligrams in a Japanese diet of nitrate. So now what you're getting is you're getting sufficient nitric oxide being produced from those diets, provided you have the right bacteria and you can make stomach acid. So that that kind of follows step one. The problem is we're not getting enough nitrate from our diet because of the the variability in in vegetables and regional growing techniques and organic versus conventional. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. For me, it's no wonder why we have the sickest population on the planet. Everything we do is disrupting nitric oxide production. If you can't make nitric oxide, you're going to develop chronic disease, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic fatigue. If you use mouthwash...